recording going. There. So uh, once again, good morning, everybody. Uh, how about some review? Anybody up for review? Anything you like? Uh, how about, uh, is everyone who's uh, in class right now, are you all uh, able to use Python on your own computer? I wasn't here on Tuesday, so I didn't get a chance to download it. Okay, uh, Sarah, uh, I'll bet that video is not online yet. Okay, so, um, hmm. Here is, I'm going to put, uh, there's something in the chat, let me see. Do we have a chapter due? Uh, no, you don't, uh, Tori. Uh, so take all of that extra time you're gonna have and enjoy yourself. Do something kind to yourself. Okay. Uh, let me find a link. Uh, I'll be back with you just in a second. I'm gonna, I'm fetching a link for Sarah. Uh, let's see where uh, Sarah. Could you tell me? Do you have a Mac or Windows machine? I have a Mac. Sorry about that. Uh, came up suddenly. Okay, you have a Mac, so I'm going to find uh, the installation guide for you. Have you ever had Python installed knowingly on your computer? Uh, no. Okay. All righty. Okay, the link I'm about to paste, Sarah, is uh, for installation on the Macintosh. The first part of the document is uh, uh, some lessons on using the, the terminal on the, uh, on the Mac. Uh, now, the Mac install takes a long time. Um, are you on batteries or electricity right now? I have enough battery. Okay. So here comes that link. I'm still trying to paste the link. There it is. Okay. So uh, that, if you click on that, it'll lead you to installation instructions. Uh, is everyone else able to run Python on their own computer? Thank you. Um, I'm having issues using the command prompt to find the um, CSC file or folder that we made on Tuesday. Okay. Uh, I've uh, made it possible for you to share your screen. Uh, you're on a Windows machine? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to show you a way, an easy way to find uh, your work. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so in the background, you have Visual Studio Code running, and it says that you have the CSE 1100 um, uh, uh, directory open. Now I'm looking, I'm looking at your terminal prompt. Now, CD. Okay, if you could use the up arrow once. Okay, so uh, back up uh, until you get to the double quote. Back up some more and stop. Now using the left arrow remove that first backslash next to the uh, CD. 
So use your left arrow. Uh, it looks like you eliminated the double quote, which you'll need to put back. Okay, now use left arrow and go back, back, back. A little more. Good. Now hit return. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, oh, okay. uh, use, yeah, you should be good now. Uh, try Python test.py. And it uh, looks like something good is happening. I hope. Ah, there you have it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anybody else having difficulties that they are aware of? Because I'm sure all of us are having difficulties they're not aware of. Um, I just have a comment. Sure. So, um, Sydney, you're using the command prompt because before the actual terminal wasn't working. When I tried it this morning, um, my terminal was randomly working again and I wasn't getting that Python error that I was getting on Tuesday. So I would maybe suggest just trying your terminal on um, the actual Visual Studio code, just in case. Oh, okay. Thanks, Tori. Okay. 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 Uh, so uh, if there's no review and you are able to run Python on your local computer, uh, let's start learning about how to use pictures. And uh, to do that, I'm going to put uh, a couple of links in the chat. Um, can I interrupt really quick? Of course. I have had the same issue as Sydney and I just tried doing what you did with her, but it didn't work for me. All right. Like it's uh, still not working. Can I, can you share your screen? Yeah. Okay. Oh boy, how do I? Oh, okay. Is it okay. shared? Did you, did you save yours to OneDrive? I honestly am not sure. I just was following the steps that we were doing. Okay. My computer uh, has been saving it to OneDrive like without me realizing it, so I, yours might not be in there. Okay. Uh, Please type in DIR and hit return. And ah, there it is. Okay. So for you, it would be CD, which stands for change directory space. And it's right there in your home directory. So it would just be lowercase CSC 1100, and you'll be all set after hitting return. And good, good. Uh, you can also uh, at this point do DIR. Let's make sure your uh, files are where you expect them to be. And hit return. Enter. Yep. Uh, good, good. Would you like to try it? Try python test.py. Uh, And uh, I think you're sharing just this one window, so we won't see the new one uh, open up, but you tell us oh, if it did. It works, yeah. Good, good, I'm glad. Okay, thank you. You're quite welcome. Uh, let me put, uh, let me go gather those links again. Uh, here's one, and put that in the chat. Now, can you please, Download, these are two pictures. They're both JPEG files. I'd like you to uh, download uh, them and put them in your Python code folder, like for example, CSC 1100. So here's the first one. And here is the link for the second one. Very good. If you could put both of those uh, into a folder where you're doing your work. Now I can, uh, <laughs> wow, uh, I just had a uh, invasive program just start on its own. That's uh, Discord. Uh, 
Uh, great program, I recommend it. It's very well done, but it seems to want to start on its own, which is kind of scary. So uh, let's see. I don't know if you've ever had Amazon Music installed on your computer, but it, you know, like every time I would turn off a head, my, turn off my headphones, Amazon Music would start. So I, <laughs> I googled this, and there's actually a known problem uh, with Macs and headphones these days that if you turn off a headphone, the music programs start. So somebody wrote a program designed just to kill the music programs whenever they start. So uh, go figure. Um, all right, so uh, what I'm gonna do is share my screen and um, let me, uh, I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna share the whole desktop. Uh, okay. <laughs> and um, uh, let me get a, a terminal going. Uh, okay, so far so good. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I'm going to make a folder. Don't worry about how I'm doing this, but I'm making a folder just like yours. Uh, CSE 1100, for example. Uh, I'm going to change directory into that. This, this part, uh, by the way, looks an awful lot like uh, it's the same. Uh, this part is the same, Mac and Windows. The Windows also has MKDIR, and it also has CD for change directory. Uh, one difference in the command line between Mac and Windows is on, um, uh, here, let me show you the, what directory I'm in. Uh, a big difference in Mac and Windows, and you try and reconcile this, wrap your head around it. Uh, on the Mac and all other uh, reasonable computers, the divider between directories and file names is a forward slash, and on Windows, it's a backward slash. Why? Because. Uh, that's just one of those little things that'll drive you nuts. Okay, so I'm now going to uh, download the same as you did the uh, files. So here's one. I hope it starts downloading, or actually, it just showed it to me. So, okay, download. And then let's go fetch the other one. There's so many things at the top of my screen, I can't find it. Okay, so this can be closed. And uh, let me download the second one. And download. All right, so now I've downloaded the two pictures, but I need to move them from my downloads directory to the 1100 directory that I uh, that I have uh, made. So um, uh, I'll just do that from the terminal. Uh, and let's see, uh, both of them start with capital P or lowercase p? Does anybody know? Let's take a look. Lowercase. Lower case. Okay, so uh, P start uh, uh, JPEG to here. Uh, good, so I've got them both now. Uh, on both Windows and the Macintosh, if you already have, oh, uh, we probably haven't done that on the Mac, so let me show you how to do that. So what I was about to say is if you already have a terminal window open, you should be able to simply say code and uh, to open the current directory, if you're already in the right directory, you can just say code period. And this is gonna bring up uh, Visual Studio Code. Now there's a step on the Mac, it may not work for you. Let me, okay, let me show you how to do that. And that would be command, comma, nope, nope, command period, nope, all right. Shift command, oh yeah, shift command P, there we are. So hold down shift and command and the, 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 the P is in Perry key, all right. And um, say ADD, 
Uh, nope, that didn't work. Uh, yeah. Ah, there it is. So type in in that search area, P-A-T-H, and it says shell command install code in your path. So uh, click that. That one doesn't come up for me. It doesn't come up for you. Are you on Windows or Mac? Uh, Windows. Okay, so only for Mac. This is only for Mac. I don't think that worked for me. All right. Uh, would you be willing to share your screen? Sure. Step one, share. Okay, okay so, so uh, shift, uh, shift command P. Shift command and the letter P. Okay, uh, there it is right there, that first one. Okay. okay. Code Done. successfully installed in path. Good, good. So wait, how do I know it did that other than right. that notification? Uh, so very good question. Uh, open a new terminal, which uh, would be done by clicking uh, at the, yeah, that, that'll work. Okay, click that. And uh, I didn't see anything open. Oh, you're in code. Okay, so um, go to the bottom of your uh, screen. There is the terminal icon next to PowerPoints icon on the bottom of your screen in the dock. Yeah, right. click on that. Uh, let's get a brand new one. So um, uh, exit this, EXIT. Or, yep, good. Now the benefit of using EXIT over closing it using the red button is that if you use EXIT, the commands that you've um, uh, entered uh, will be remembered so that you they'll be in your command history. You could use up arrow to get them. So go ahead and hit return and close the window. Now it's safe to use. Uh, so uh, click on the terminal at the bottom uh, where you were before. Nope, not that one. There you go. Okay, uh, so do you have a directory made for this class? Yeah, it's the 1100. Uh, is it in your home directory? Say ls, and you'll find out what's in your home directory. Uh, let's see, if you scroll upward, maybe. Yeah, there it is. Now, ls on the Mac is the same. Yeah, I, I can't as... even see it. Oh, it's, it's, it's there. <laughs> So oh, there it is. Your cursor's right over it. Oh, man. Uh, if, oh application. Uh, yeah. So LS on the Mac is the same as DIR on Windows. So uh, Colin, please type CD space. Uh, CD space 1100. Okay, so now let's try the uh, to see if uh, code is in your path. So C O D E space period, and hit enter. And um, uh, there you go. It started up another Visual Studio code, and it noticed it is opened in the eleven hundred folder. You can close your other one. Oh, nice! That's great. Yeah. Well, we aim to please. Mine keeps telling so, me that there's no such file or directory. All right. So, Colin, if you could uh, cease sharing, uh, and could um, uh, Ida, could you show the um, uh, your screen? You know, screen? What, you know yeah. what? Before I do that, uh, can I just test to see if uh, opening a new terminal works? Opening a new terminal. Or. Uh, is that the wrong word for uh, these? Get out of the way. Like a new file of these? Uh, well, I'm not sure. I, I don't understand. Well, what is it that you'd like to test? Actually, you know what? I think I just answered my own question. Never mind. Oh, okay. Happy to help. Ida, please share your screen. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, all right, I see an issue. So uh, command lines, like on both on Windows and on the Mac, in fact, everywhere, abhor uh, spaces in file names. So if you do have a space in a file name uh, on, on the Mac, uh, here's how you would do it. Uh, so click in your terminal window, please. And uh, use the up arrow. Now that's the command that did not work, but we can make it work if you use the left arrow to back up to the closest letter C right there at, okay, one, the one to the right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Whoops. Okay, so here, type in backslash space 1100. Okay. So as I, I mentioned, well, oh, sorry. If I were to just change the file name and get rid of the space, then will it work without the backslash? Correct. So uh, let me help you do that. So cd uh, dot dot. That goes back to your parent directory. Uh, go ahead, hit hit enter. And by the way, you could you could do this from your fold, uh, finder view. Would you like to do it that way instead? Um, either way is fine. Okay. So. Um, to change the name of a file on the Mac, it's the command MV for move. And on Windows, in case you need to do that from the command line, it would be REN for rename. So you're on a Mac, uh, so move and space. You can enter a space. Yep. Uh, CSC backslash space 1100 space now csc 1100 with no space and enter done so Thank now you. you can now you can change directory directly without uh, the backslashes okay uh, any other questions I will happily and cheerfully try to answer? Um, I just want to check to make sure that like everything's downloading because it's been in the same spot for a while. So I'm assuming it's working. I just wanted to check. All right. Uh, well, yeah, I see what it says on the bottom there. Uh, yeah. Press return. So go ahead, press return. And now your usual computer password. Don't worry, we will not see it as you type it. No one will see it. Okay, you're you're back in business. Okay, there we go. I just want I didn't want to screw anything up. Thank you. You're welcome. Gosh, I'm so cheery this morning. You'd think I got a good night's sleep, which I never do. Okay. Did you exercise today? <laughs> Which I never do. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't. And, and, and that's, uh, that really is costing me a lot uh, by not exercising. So that always uh, puts you in a good mood, even if you're tired. I have a crazy question just as a Windows user who's never used a Mac before. All right, are you on a Mac now? No. <laughs> Oh, all right. No, but I saw Colin's desktop when he was sharing a screen. Why uh -huh. is your desktop like that? On Mac, can you just like drag your files wherever you want? Because they were overlapping a little bit. Um, yeah. In fact, uh, that's what I did with the two uh, JPEGs. On your desktop. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, you can do that on Windows as well. On Windows, though, you can't have them overlapping. It automatically puts them into different, like, I don't know. Okay. Cells. Yeah. yeah. I just now, thought, yeah. I was like, they're really close together. Are they overlapping? Is that a thing you can do on Mac? Huh. Okay. Well, you know, who knows? Maybe they have a patent on it. So, 
It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, okay. Not the ability to drag your files on your desktop anywhere you want. Uh, you would be amazed what people have patented. I've patented division. So if you ever do division, you owe me money. So let's see. Uh, I'm trying to recall where I was. Uh, let's see. I was sharing my screen and sharing. I was sharing my screen. So let me go ahead and do that again. All right. Ah, yes. Okay. So I'm going to create a new program. So I'm going to use a new file and I'll call it uh, blink. Dot .py Okay. Now I'm going to enter something which I'm sure will not work for most of you and then we'll we'll fix it. Uh Wait, actually, we'll that, that was going to be my question. How did you just make blink right there? Ah, okay. So uh let me kill it and I'll delete it and I'll start over. So delete and okay so there's uh, a few ways you can create a new file uh, but from the folder if you use the uh, new file it looks like a document with a plus sign and you do that from the folder it's guaranteed to be in the right place blink.py okay so import cv2 now, I'm pretty certain you don't have this installed yet. So um, I'm going to hit save. Uh, I'm using, I'm going to open up the terminal. Uh, in, well, I can, I can open up this terminal. It's already here. And I'll say Python. On the Mac, it's probably Python 3. But on Windows, it's just Python. And I'll say blink.py and I'm, I might or might not get an error. Okay, I'm not getting an error because I already have it installed, but you probably are going to get an error. Tell me if you do. Yeah, I did. I got an error. Okay, so uh, very good. On the Mac, it would be pip3, but on Windows, it's just going to be pip. Uh, install. Open CV dash, make sure it's a dash, not a hyphen, uh, not a uh, underscore. Uh, and then open CV dash Python. Now for me, it's going to be real quick because I already have it installed. So is it installing for, for you? Me just installed. Am I supposed okay. to get an error on Windows? Uh, yes, you were supposed to get an error on Windows, uh, and that's why you need to install uh, OpenCV Python. Uh, do I need to put code dot just before I open the Python blink.py? Uh, that depends. Um, I don't there are know. Many... I'm looking, I'm like, what did we just do? Because I did not get an error. Uh, would you be willing to share your screen? Sure. I have to stop mine. Yep, go ahead. Let's do the screen. Share it. Mm. Okay. Go oh, away. So there's Discord. Yep. Always open in the background. Uh -huh. Anyway. Oh, okay. Here so in your editor, could you click on blink.py? Let's see what's in it. Uh, what, this one? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Blink.py. There's yep. nothing in it. Okay. That's why you didn't get an error. <laughs> Am I supposed to put something in it? Yes. Yes, please type in Teams. import space C as in Charles, V as in Victor, two, 
CV2. And one, the two, okay, hit enter. Enter. Enter, right. Now save your file. Good. And in your terminal window, you can now uh, watch the error happen. Uh, uh, use the up arrow in your terminal. Yep, I see the red. Okay. So, up. yep. Enter. And go ahead and do that. Excellent. And now you'll experience the lovely error. Woohoo, it's an error. So, okay. Yep. So type in PIP space install. What? Yeah, type there, right? What's going on? Why is this thing moving? You're supposed to be over here. Okay, uh, just hit, hit enter. And right. That tends to cure a lot of things. <laughs> uh, so enter. PIP, yeah, PIP space install space open CV one word dash or hyphen. So CVs, Charles Victor dash Python. P-Y-T-H-O-N, yep, hit enter. <clears throat> and that's gonna do what I needed to do? That is doing what you needed to do right now. Excellent. Okay, now what we've just installed is called OpenCV. And the CV stands for computer vision. So the, uh, let me just, uh, oh, I'm not showing you my screen. So I'm, I'm sort of just uh, entertaining myself, which is a good thing. I've, I've had a lot of practice at it. Uh, so uh, uh, I wanted a browser here. So open CV dot, I believe ORG, Ah, here it is. So OpenCV is a open source computer vision library, which is enormously widespread and enormously well supported. Uh, it has, um, as it, the name in, uh, the name indicates, all sorts of computer vision capabilities, uh, but it also has a lot of uh, capabilities that Python can leverage to work with pictures. Uh, so we're going to learn just a little, little bit uh, from OpenCV. Um, we'll learn how it uh, can open images, show images, and uh, we'll probably uh, write, a, write a program to, that opens your computer's camera uh, and can take a video file uh, or you know, things of that nature. Okay, so I'm going to go back to, let's see, you can still see this, I hope. Uh, all right, so um, I'd like you to do the following. Uh, let's say images equals and uh, make it a list. Uh, say images.append, if you recall, that's how you add to the end of a list. And now let's use uh, CV2, CV2 dot I M for image read. And I'm going to put in a uh, single quote P1.jpg single quote, close parentheses, uh, close second set of closed parentheses. I'm gonna copy that line, paste it, and change the one over here into a two. Uh, hey, question, I've still got red squiggles. Uh, let's make believe you don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm going to run this program now, and it ought not to give me any errors, but it also doesn't do anything. Well, it seems not to do anything. Actually, uh, by not giving us any errors, that tells us that the images were correctly read.
All right, let's uh, let's show them. Uh, okay, so about CV two uh, dot I am show now in show image show takes two parameters. First is a window name and that's a string and CV2 is also going to use the name of the window as the ID for the window. <laughs> you can have multiple windows open at the same time. And uh, the way that uh, CV2 tells them apart is by the windows name. So I'm going to say uh, uh, something simple, just like P. And I'm going to say which, now I have to specify which picture do I want to show? Well, I'll show the first one. We're just getting started. So images zero, that's going to correspond to P1. All right, and if we do this now, don't do it now, uh, you may not see anything come up. So instead, you have to wait for a character, uh, wait for something on the keyboard. Uh, so let's do CV2 dot wait key with a zero. Finally, CV2 dot lowercase d destroy all windows and save that, okay? I'll leave that there for a minute. Now, this is kind of fidgety. Uh, let me run it here. And unfortunately, OpenCV has this habit of opening windows behind other windows. So if you don't see your window, Maybe it's behind other windows. There it is. Okay. Now notice that the window is just sticking around. Don't close it using the red, uh, the red or the close gadget in Windows. Uh, <clears throat> that actually shows my uh, uh, ancientness and pedigree when I say a gadget, because. Uh, uh, on the Amiga in 1985, uh, something like this, a, what you would call a button today, close button, it was called a gadget. So now hit any key while the window is selected. So click on the window and then hit any key and the window goes away. Undoubtedly, some of you, it didn't work. So let me know, did, did it work for everyone? I see two thumbs, good. Mine says that CV2 has no attribute in red. Uh, in red or read? Read. Uh, all right, would you be willing to show your screen? Yeah. You see it? It's it. Uh, yep. There. Oh, yeah, that is a cool background. <laughs> Thank ah, you. Yeah. So I see the problem uh, in each case where I was saying M with an M, you have M oh, okay. with an N. So you that need to change sense. there and the line below. Okay. And one more. Is it this one as well? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, save. Remember to save. Oh. Okay. Try it out. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at this. Uh, images. Let's see. It's saying, oh, wait, P on line eight. Uh, replace the square brackets with parentheses. Oh, okay. And save. Try 
try that again. Cool. Good. Now, oh, don't, 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 don't do that. You'll never get it back. Uh, so while that Windows is current, uh, hit any key on your keyboard, uh, any, any letter key. Good. All right. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, here's what I'd like you to do. Uh, I need to share my desktop again. Okay, so what we're writing here is a, a blink interferometer. We're going to write that and we're going to discover Pluto. Uh, let me bring up my browser and uh, talk to you a little bit about that. Um, blink. Nope. Okay. There and blink. Wait, Pluto? Is that a. Is the image that we have like an inverted space photo? Uh, yes, those are what I have given you is the actual photographic plates used by Clive Tumbaugh, uh, which I think this is one of those cases where a woman actually did the work and Clive Tumbaugh took the credit. Uh, I believe that's true, but we'd have to look that up. Uh, you know, there's so many cases of that, maybe I'm mistaken, and this is a, uh, not one of those. But what I have on screen now is the Blink Comparator, I'm sorry, Blink Comparator, uh, that was used to discover Pluto. <clears throat> now, what you're looking at is a machine that has a central eyepiece, and then two lenses, one that will display this slide and the other that will show this slide. And then there's a knob that allows you to flip back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, the idea is that anything that moves is in our solar system. Okay, because the stars being so far away do not move uh, uh, unless we're talking about the rotation of the earth and all of the stars are moving together. Okay, now you can imagine, let's see who made this. Wow, this was made by Carl Zeiss and I'll bet you this machine costs the equivalent of a couple of homes. I bet you this would cost as much as two houses or more made by Carl Zeiss. But we're going to do it in like five minutes uh, on our computers. All right. So uh, OpenCV, you know what? Let me, uh, this is going to give away a bit of the farm. But uh, uh, this, um, this page uh, could be a useful link for you. Let me give you the, let me see, is it public? I'm not sure. <clears throat> well, this is going to be the basis of your next project. Uh, and um, uh, so I'm not going to give it to you right now because this particular version has the source code solution to your project. So I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, this is your next project, by the way. Uh, if you can see, does anybody see the horse? Okay, so you're going to create a flip book for your next project. And uh, using the flip book, you'll be able to rotate through a sequence of images. The images that I'm providing to you are the Moybridge uh, photographs of a, uh, in this case, a galloping horse. And um, this one, it says 1872, but I did more research, and I think it's more like 1875. Uh, Moybridge is a, a pioneer in chrono, chrono photography. So uh, uh, photography, which is capturing time. And a fellow by the name of Leland Stanford 
who you may recognize from the name Stanford and namely Stanford University. That was kind of a, a side project he felt like doing one day. Uh, raised uh, thoroughbred horses uh, for both, uh, uh, you know, horse racing like you see here, <clears throat> but also the kinds of horses that are used for trotting with a, uh, uh, a little uh, wagon behind. Um, so he, he raised two kinds of horses and uh, there's a story for which there is absolutely no proof that uh, uh, he engaged in a bet uh, to determine the, the object of the bet is to, and this is not a true story, but I'll tell it anyway, because it's a common story. Uh, the bet was, he bet that horses, all four hooves of a horse in a gallop leave the ground at the same time. In 1872, for some reason, uh, nobody looked at horses closely enough to determine whether or not that was true. So he hired Moybridge to create a, an elaborate setup uh, next to a uh, racetrack uh, where spread every about a foot and a half, there was a trip wire which the horse's hooves would trip and uh, not interfering with the horse's gait, obviously. And tripping that wire would cause a camera to fire. And so uh, that way he was able to arrange uh, over 20 cameras in a row and captured photographic evidence that yes, indeed, in a gallop, uh, all four hooves of a horse come off the ground at the same time. So your project is to, uh, I mean, I give you uh, all of these images. I think there's 11 of them. And you'll use that to create a flip book where uh, pressing one key will rotate forwards through all your pictures, making them move and pressing a different key will rotate all through all the pictures going backwards. So you can sort of single step from one picture to another. So that'll be your project. Okay. Uh, so what I'd like you to do, and actually uh, I'm, I'm gonna cheat. Um, no, you don't have this. All right, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna take this source code and just plop it into my editor, uh, which uh, is almost correct because I lost my import. Import CV2. Oh goodness, this has uh, uh, some string formatting in it that uh, is uh, old. So this isn't the type of string formatting that I've taught you, but it is equivalent. So let's talk about, I'll add comments to this. Are we supposed to be copying this down? Yes, please. Okay. Are we deleting all the stuff that we had previously except the import? Uh, no, no, actually keep what you have there. I'm just noticing I don't have. Um, there, I'm going to uh, allow me to, to correct myself. OK, there's what you have now. And I'm just going to replace just the last couple of lines. OK. Professor. Yes. Um, it keeps saying for me that CV2 doesn't exist, but I did the install and I've been following along, so I don't know why it's not working. Uh, could you share your screen? Yes. Okay, so you're on a Mac and let's see, so you've got, uh, okay. Uh, now, are you saying it says it doesn't exist because the red lines in the editor? No, down in the terminal, it's not letting me do anything. 
Uh, okay, can you show that to me? Down in here? Yeah, uh, there or in the other terminal. Yeah, I tried it in the other terminal too and it was doing the same thing. Let's see. Okay, so on the Mac, you'll need to type Python 3 instead of Python. Okay, and that failed also. So let's now now let's read the um, uh, cv 2im show. All right. Uh, let me read the error. Assertion failed. Uh, so it's suggesting that reading the image did not work. Uh, can I see your uh, editor window, please? This one? Yeah. Mm hmm Okay, if you can click in the terminal down below. Yes, click there and say LS and hit enter. Uh, all right, your pictures are there. Try running this here, please. So try uh, Python 3 blink.py. Uh, I wonder if you, uh, uh, there was a, a failure in the download. Can you click on the left-hand side on p1.jpg? Aha, there we are. Okay. Uh, the, uh, if you could click in your terminal again, let's just uh, verify. Uh, ls space minus l, so dash l. That's the long listing. And yeah, so the picture didn't download correctly. Uh, if you could uh, download the pictures again, let's see how you did that. So looking at the chat, uh, you'll be able to... Um, I'm sorry, it's taking me a second. That's okay. <clears throat> okay, so download that. And download the other one. Okay, now those both went to your download directory. Mm-hmm. And um, if you could find those uh, in your downloads. Now you are presenting your screen, make sure that you, you know, something's gonna come up that's... There's nothing in there. Okay, so uh, scroll to the letter P. A little bit more, a little bit more. There you go. So there's P1 <clears throat> and P2 if you could move that to your 1100 folder. Yep, and re uh, replace. And one more, P2. Replace. Now uh, go back to your editor. Let's confirm, uh, type in, oh, actually it, we just confirmed, it's the picture's there. It should work for you now, you wanna try it? There it is uh, in the background. Thank so you. click click on the open window and then type a key. Which one? Type uh, any key you want, uh, but not shift and things like that. Okay, good, good. You're all set. Okay, Can thank you. ask a question? Yeah, okay. yeah. Why does it say p1.jpg aliases? 
Uh, there was uh, uh, some misfire in how uh, the file was transferred. Okay. Yeah, don't don't worry, don't worry about it. It was a boo boo. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show my screen again. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to show the whole desktop. Okay. Oh, here's a picture of Fredo. Here's baby Fredo. Yeah. Okay, that was a nice digression. We can always digress for puppies. Uh, all right, so I'm going to write some uh, comments here. If you could also follow with me. All right. Um, when you copied in that new code, like some of it's cut off. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna rewrite this down here just a little bit to match what what I've taught you. So, uh, but first, let me write some comments. These lines read the indicated images. Putting them into a list called images. Being a list, the first image is at index zero and the second is at index one. So that, sh that should not be a surprise to anyone. We know how lists work. So here, we will use current index to ping pong back and forth whenever a non Q is pressed on the keyboard. Q will quit the program. Okay, so we're going to start out at index zero. Initialize key to anything other than Q. Okay, this loop will continue until the user enters Q. Reuse the same window over and over. Remember, I mentioned that uh, OpenCV will use the Windows name as its ID to tell what window you're referring to. Okay. Uh, and pardon my uh, my squiggles. Uh, I have no idea why they are uh, there. Let's see. That's not helping. Uh, that's not helping. Okay. Go away. Go away. Go away. I don't want to click on anything, but I want you to go away. Uh, good. All right. Escape key worked. Good. All right. So I don't, I'm at a loss to explain uh, why do we have the squiggles here, but it does happen from time to time. Uh, I'm just going to 
soldier on. Now, this formatting here is a little different than what you've what I taught you. Let me convert it into what I taught you. So there would be a uh, uh, colon D, I think. And then instead of that, okay, so this should match what I taught you. If you notice the backslash single quote, that allows me to use a single quote within a string which is surrounded by single quotes. Question. Yeah, go ahead. After the D and the squiggly brackets, is that a double space and then a single dash? Uh, yep, it is. Oh, it's a, quite a few spaces. Is it only supposed to be one? Oh, uh, you, you know, it's, it's cosmetic. You can make it whatever you want. I'll okay. make it one. I'll make it one. Okie doke. I have never typed the word flourish before. Did I spell it wrong? Is it like that? Or is there a U in it? I think there's a U in it. Okay. Yeah, the U seems natural. All right. Uh, change the Windows title, not its name. Its name is Pluto. Change the Windows uh, title to reflect which image is currently displayed. Wait for any key to be pressed. Now by any key, I am excluding shift and function and control and option because those won't generate an event by themselves. So wait for any key to be pressed. And the zero says, wait forever. Okay, and well, a little bit more to explain here. The CHR is needed to turn the number returned by wait key into a letter. So wait key is going to return a number. The number indicates what letter it is, but still, it's a number, not a letter. CHR, uh, we did this previously in class uh, some time ago. You can give a, 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 a number to CHR, and if it, that corresponds to a letter, it'll turn it into the letter. And this accomplishes the ping pong. So one, becomes zero and zero becomes one. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little smaller so that you have it on screen all at once. Let's see. Um, whoops, that didn't do what I meant. Uh, Okay, now I understand this is pretty small type, but I'll make it larger again in, in a moment. I wanna make sure that you have a chance. Maybe you wanna take a photograph. Okay, I'm going to try and look at your camera feeds. 
And uh, there's only uh, three people with cameras on, so that's not much of an indication. But if uh, you could uh, give me a thumbs up uh, when you think I'm ready to move on, when you're ready to have me move on. Can you zoom back in on the bottom so I can see what it says? Sure. Uh, I got to click. Is that helpful for you? Yeah. All right, I'm. I think I'm uh, ready to try it. Well, let's see what mistakes I made. All right, uh, Python three. Uh, blink, blink. Okay, ready. Uh, and I see nothing, and I'm starting to freak out. But then I remember, my smart professor said. OpenCV likes to open its windows behind other windows. So let me go look. Oh, I think I saw it. There it is. OK. Now you're ready? Now push a key, any key except Q. Now I'm going to hold, now it's just blinking back and forth. And this is how Pluto was spotted. There are uh, several things changing in this image. One of them was unexpected to uh, Clyde Tumbaugh. Some of them were known. For example, I'm sure this one here was known. Watch it move. How do you blink between the photos? I'm just hitting space, the space bar, over and over and over again. The space bar deletes mine. OK, uh, I'm going to stop sharing. And could you show us your code? And if you share the whole desktop, we'll be able to see what result the code produces. Let's see. Uh, OK, can you scroll up a little bit? Uh, Tari, could you scroll up a little bit? OK. Boy, that looks correct. Uh, can you show us what happens? Okay, this click. Pops up, oh. and if I hit space, it goes away. Okay, I think I know what's going on. Um, oh, I didn't save it. There you go. Try saving. Sometimes it doesn't like me doing the shortcut. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So uh, I'll share my screen again and let's go find Pluto. Okay, so it's pretty sure it's not this one. See, they've moved over there. And I believe you'll find it here. There's Pluto. And you see how it's moved to here. Put it back there and moved there. So by uh, blinking uh, back and forth between the two pictures, uh, whatever's in motion, whatever is not in common between the two pictures uh, becomes more obvious to see.
Now, there are a few other things uh, moving in this image. Uh, so I must admit, I am not certain that this one is Pluto. However, I'm confident because it's nicely in the center of the image. So All right. Theoretically, now we can win any spot the difference game. Yeah, you could just download the uh, before and after uh, and use this program and uh, any differences will become obvious. Good thinking. Bet money on it, bet money on how fast you can solve it. Yep. Okay. Uh, now let's turn our attention to the title bar because we didn't talk about that. I'm going to push this uh, space bar and that zero should turn into a one. Ah, good. And that was, that is the utility. I'm going to quit now. That is the utility. Uh, the reason to have added this line. This line here, line, my line 27. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about this code? All right, so I have an uh, in-class assignment. Let's work on this right now. And uh, this is going to get you, this is going to get you really close to finishing uh, the, the next project. So what I'd like you to do is change this program so that uh, the pressing A will cycle backwards and pressing S. And the only reason I'm choosing A and S is because they're next to each other. Uh, will cycle forwards. Okay, can you do that? And Q will still quit. Okay, feel free to discuss this out loud. Go ahead. I noticed that the only trouble we're going to have with this at the moment is that we only have two images to work with. Correct. You're right. That could be a problem. So theoretically. What if you, what if you keep advancing forward and you run out of pictures? You crash. What are you going to do? You have to make it into a loop, I suppose. Yes, but we're already in a loop. We have a while on line 25. You have to loop the images. Uh, well, I'm going to draw your attention down here at the bottom. Now, certainly going forward would mean current index equals current index plus one. Certainly going backward would be current index equals Current, uh, current index minus one. So why is it one minus current index now? Well, this is designed to do something different, which is to ping pong oh. between two images. Right, right. But now I want you to go in the direction that you determine by which key you press. My point right now is that uh, since there's only two images, there will be no difference between going forward and going backwards because there's only two. You wouldn't ah, be able to tell. Good point. But in the next project, you will be able to tell. I suppose so, yes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in fact, uh, let me, 
you you keep you all keep working, and I will go find uh, buffet. Uh, oh goodness, do I not have it here? Yes, I don't have it here. So let me go get it. Uh, where is my browser? All right. Go away. Uh, flipbook, don't copy. In other words, don't give it away to, to you. All right, yep, there it is. It opened the window in the back. Uh, so now I'm hitting the S key and it's going forward. And the Leland Stanford won his bet, which didn't really take place because all four hooves are off the ground. S, I'm still going forward. Now I'm going to hold down the S key. And I'm, it's like playing a movie. And now I'm going to hold down the A key. So I'm going backward. Now the horse is going to run backwards. So that's the finished product for your project. Doing what you're doing now is going to set you up to be very close to finishing. Um, does this project have to be done on visual code or can it be done on Replit? Replit can't deal with pictures. So right. uh, it has to be done on your own computer. That's why this subject matter waited until now. But Milo is bright. If this program functions correctly, you won't be able to tell because there's only two pictures. But on the other hand, if it functions incorrectly, you'll probably crash. Are we looking to change the wait key to something that's not forever? Uh, no, no, you, th that'll stay the same. Okay. So let me get you started and demonstrate what will go wrong. So uh, we're going to be we're changing the these lines, and so it's going to be something like if the key is uh, S, we want to go forwards. So that would mean current index plus equals one. And uh, L if key equals A current index minus equals one. All right, what could go wrong? Uh, tab error, all right, that's because I pasted this code. 
Uh, so let me do uh, use wield a blunt instrument. Uh, and now correct that one and that one. Okay. All right, again, once again, be careful because it opens behind other windows. All right, so I'm on image zero. I'm gonna hit S to move to image one. Worked. I'm gonna use S crash. Okay, so your job is fix that, handle that in an appropriate way. What I was hoping is that when I got to the end of the pictures, I would loop back to the beginning. There's the only, there's a big hint, but it's the last hint I'll give. Hey, how are you doing, everybody? I'm going to take initiative and break the silence. Hello, dear classmates of mine. I suppose that Professor loves these white horse questions, and we need to make the images loop. So I'm assuming we're going to need to use either a while or a for loop. Can you really translate that to Hulu? So I feel like, if anything, it'd be a for. I feel like it has something to do with how many images are in the list images. Cause like once you hit the end to have it loop back to the beginning, but I don't know genius. how to keep going with the Out of your genius. Thanks. 
<laughs> I think that's exactly what it is, is that for blank in the list images. But let me challenge you there, though. How would you alternate between going forwards and backwards? We've already got those two things set up. I, there's probably a way to do it where you're not writing it twice, but I said. Hmm. Hmm. So uh, a reminder that this class uh, counts towards the data science major and minor. Uh, it doesn't count towards the computer science major or minor. Um, is there anybody here who's uh, in data science? I am. I am. I am. I am. Wow, cool. That is awesome. That is really, really awesome. Have you taken data science one yet? Yeah. 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 Isn't Professor Wheeler offer, uh, awesome? Yeah, he a uh, long, long time ago, he uh, won the uh, best teacher award at Carthage and uh, I have not. Uh, and every once in a while, he reminds me. <laughs> he's, he's a great guy, great guy. I'm not in data science, but I'm having a good time, so. I always learn a great deal when I talk to him. You know, it's, it's sort of like, you know, uh, it's almost like if you get to the end, you want to loop back around to the beginning. And like, you know, if you go too far towards the beginning, you want to loop around to the end. So that's kind of what it's like, right? So we're not on the right track with a loop. Um, it is illegal to answer that question. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to answer it out loud. I'm, but you'll have to read my lips. Okay. All right. Ah, hold this call. Okay. There's your answer. Thank you. I've been trying to make a loop that involves the current index so that when it gets to the end, it starts back at zero, but I haven't figured that out yet. It still crashes. And I am not going to give away the answer. Yeah, current index makes sense.
Instead, I'll show you another puppy. Yes, thank you. Do you think we should be, you guys think we should be using length of the list images and maybe trying to use that as a range? Where's the shot? Okay, I'll see what happens. My computer explodes, I'll let you know. Maybe uh, we'll look something up. Okay. So what I'm interested in knowing which telescope did he use? Um, okay, so it must have been the Lowell Observatory. Yeah, the golden age of astronomy. Yeah. You can just imagine, uh, this is Percival Lowell, uh, for whom the uh, Lowell Observatory is named. Uh, you can just imagine uh, Percival Lowell saying, uh, you there, you there, a little to the left. But of course, the stars, you know, stars pay no heed to uh, uh, humankind's protestations. Let's see, it doesn't have the bottom. Okay. Okay, we're uh, coming up with only a few minutes left. Uh, I'll leave you with this problem. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's uh, worth your time to figure it out because that'll get you real close to uh, doing the flipbook project, which I'll assign will be online uh, certainly over the weekend. You know, so it's just like, you know, if, it, if you go too far in one direction, you want to loop around to the other end. How do we turn something in from a Visual Studio? Uh, well, remember it's Visual Studio Code because there's another program called Visual Studio, which is not at all this. So try try to remember to use code. And the way right. that you turn it in is uh, the program that you're writing now is on your laptop or on your computer. So it would be identical process to handing any other file in from your local computer. So if you've ever handed in a file from Schoology, you know that you know there's some kind of uh, submit something button and that will open a, uh, a file dialog. And then you navigate to the file, you click on it and hit submit. All Does right. that help? Yeah.
Okay, that's working again. Oh, I've been a bad boy. I haven't backed up my computer since February 19th. Maybe I'll do that now. Everybody backs up their computer, right? Maybe you have cloud storage at the least. You put your important stuff on the cloud storage. Make sure you back up your programs and your data. Back up your whole computer because you never know when disaster will strike. So Sarah, I have not forgotten about you. How are you doing in your install? Um, there was just this one part where I was kind of confused on. I didn't know like if I entered a wrong key. I can right. share real fast. Yeah, share real fast. Get to that part. And I didn't know what to do after that. Ooh, okay. Um all right, uh, so you're in VI, you're in insert mode. Uh, so, uh, and you're editing uh, Z profile. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a line of text in the document that you need to copy and paste here. Mm -hmm. All right. Hang on, let me stop my shirt for one sec. All right. And, uh, okay, go ahead. That one? Uh, yes, so hit enter. And now uh, on the top left of your keyboard will be a key that's marked escape, ESC. Mm -hmm. Press it once. Okay, good. And now press the colon. Okay, the colon key, good. And the letter W followed by the letter Q, followed by, oh, I'm sorry, backspace up both, eliminate both of those, make them lowercase. Good, hit enter. Good, that part is done. And then, and then Rian, I think I can follow the rest of it. Okay, and I'll, okay. I'll, uh, during my lunch, I'll get the uh, last class's video online. Okay, thank you. Okay, everybody, uh, we've reached that time of day where we, uh, uh, are supposed to part. Uh, I wasn't going to say we have to part, but uh, I choose to part, <laughs> and I bet yeah. you do too. So I'll see you uh, next week. Y'all, first things first, I hit gold. It's buh, buh, buh. If current index is greater than or equal to length images, and then reset it to zero. I haven't done it the other way, but there you go. It didn't crash. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, bye, everybody. <laughs> bye. Bye.